What's up guys, welcome back to Among the Fence. On today's album review, we're going to be checking out the album The World Is In Your Way by the band Dragged Under. Don't forget, if you have an album you want me to review, go ahead and leave a comment below. Maybe your favorite band's coming out with a new album, or maybe they just released a new single. Just leave a comment below in the comments, and I'll make it happen for you. So Dragged Under is a new band, but they actually have quite a bit of history that we're going to go through before we just jump right into the review. Dragged Under actually formed from the ashes of another band called Rest or Pose when that band kind of went under. Two of the members, I believe, uh, Tony and Ryan Fluff Bruce, decided they were going to continue with Rest Repose, but then it didn't really work out, so then they ended up... <clears throat> Rest Repose was a heavy metal band that started around 2014, and I think its core members were YouTubers Jared Dines and Ryan Fluff Bruce. And the two of them kind of, I guess they lived close enough together to where they got together and they started this band and then they had other people join them along the way and they were able to go on tours and it actually came out with albums and it became a touring band and it was doing pretty well for the most part. But the last tour that they went on, I believe it was in 2018, they had some issues come their way. Their uh, vocalist wasn't really taking care of himself in the way he should have been, especially for being a vocalist. So they ended up dropping him, and then Tony, who was the bass player, ended up stepping up and doing vocals, and there was just a lot of things going on in the band, and Jared Dines was having a hard time because his main source of income was from YouTube, and he just wasn't able to put in the time and the effort to be able to be in a touring band. So after that tour, when they went back home, Jared Dines was no longer part of the band, and they lost their drummer too, I believe. So it's basically just... Fluff and Tony Capocci. I probably saying that horribly, <laughs> but yeah, it was just the two of them. And I believe that Fluff brought on another guy to play the guitar, the bass, and they were writing more stuff for Rest Repose, but it just wasn't Rest Repose anymore. Like the band members had changed, even the music that they were writing was completely different. So it was time for a completely different band name and revamp the entire thing. So they had two other guys join the band and they had a full band going and they came up with the band Dragged Under. And they just released their newest album in 2020. They had other singles before, which I heard here and there, but honestly, I don't, I was, I wasn't a fan of Rest Repose, but I was a supporter. I wasn't that big on the music, but I appreciated these guys putting the hard work. I'm a fan of Jared Dines and Fluff and I, just really liked what they were doing, especially when they were going tours. They take all these other like little bands and have them open for them and stuff. I thought that was really cool. But when Dragged Under came around, it just it just felt like they were trying to take the same thing and put it in new wrapping paper and present it to us, or at least uh, to me. And I just wasn't that interested anymore. It just felt tainted in a way. And honestly, I've been kind of dancing around the idea of reviewing this album just for that reason. I didn't want to listen to it and then just be like, oh, this thing sucks just because it's already tainted for me. And I've already made up my mind that I don't like it because it's not rest or pose. And I just, I don't know, I didn't want to go into this album already kind of pissed off about the whole thing. But you know what, man, I was so so very wrong. And like I said before, I was not really that big of a fan of Rest or Pose music. I mean, it was just uh, it was just a hard rock band, a heavy metal band. It wasn't anything that interesting. It wasn't that challenging for anybody to listen to. It was just very it was just kind of there. It had verses and choruses and Jared Dines or Fluff did a guitar solo and that was it. It wasn't really anything that just really grabbed you, but Man, from the first song on this album, it just grabs you and it's in your face and it's got this, uh, this whole album is just big. It's, it's all very, very big and very unforgiving. All the lyrics are very unapologetic and it's very, it just feels raw. It's, it, it's fantastic. It's a great album. My favorite song on the album is probably Hypochondria, which is kind of weird because I think it's one of the singles that they released and I don't usually end up liking singles that I release from albums just because I don't know it's usually the most like radio play single for me or something I, I just never really enjoy them to that extent but this song just hit me hard 
in so many different ways. It starts up with a really good buildup into a, just a heavy hitting driving riff. And like I said, it just sounds so big. It's like, I looked it up and the genre for this band is considered to be heavy metal or just metal or hard rock. But honestly, like they have some very hardcore punk elements to it, especially with uh, Fluff on guitar. If you guys watch any YouTube videos with him or any of that, you know he's into hardcore punk. And even though it isn't strictly just that, a lot of these songs just show a lot of elements of that, and I really enjoyed it. And the chorus on the song just sounds so freaking good with the vocals, and even the lyrics on it are just so great. The lyrics in this entire song are so captivating, and for me, in a way, kind of relatable, because in a way, I do kind of suffer from hypochondria. I feel like everybody does in some sense, but it's just so real, like... You could just really relate to it. And as I was reading the lyrics, I was on the edge of my seat almost, just waiting to see where it was going to go, especially when it goes into the second verse. It's just, man, it, I can't say how much I like this song. I, I, I have a playlist on Spotify where I put all the songs that I can listen to over and over. I, I could just hit shuffle and I know I won't have to skip a song at it once. And it's called God Tier. That's just what I named it. And this song went in there after the first like three minutes of the song before it was over. And after the second verse, it goes into the chorus, which again, I just, I can't stress enough how just amazing it sounds. But then it goes into like this bridge interlude kind of thing. And it sounds just haunting. It has this kind of, it's the only way how I could describe it. It just has kind of a haunting, eerie kind of feel to it, which at first I noticed it. And I was like, I don't know if this really fits the song, but then I listened to the song again, and I'm like, dang, dude, this thing is just, it's so solid. Everything flows so well into it, and every kind of theme that they place into the song just fits it perfectly. And one thing about this album, especially on this song that caught me off guard, was the vocal performance, because I saw Rest Repose on their last tour when Tony had to take over the vocals, and now he became the main frontman for Dragged Under, and... I was honestly pretty excited when I heard Tony was going to be singing at the concert, but I didn't know how it was going to play off when he's the main frontman. And man, he just blew me away. His vocal performance on all these songs is absolutely amazing. He couldn't have done any better. And again, on Hypochondria, he does such a great job at bringing the emotion to you. Like you, you feel the desperation and the struggle in his voice with dealing with this disease, honestly, this mental health issue. It's just so trauma. It's just traumatic. Like it's so, it, it, he, he makes you feel it. It's great. My second favorite song on the album is the last one, which is the hardest drug. The song starts out with this really groovy riff, but then when the vocals come in, the vocals don't really end at the same time when the measure of the riff ends. So it kind of gives this weird off balance feeling to the song and it almost feels like the vocals and the music are like fighting against each other in a way. Like it creates like this layered feel to it and it's really freaking cool. And especially when it gets into the pre-chorus because the pre-chorus, the riff changes but the vocal pattern stays the same. And it was freaking neat, man. I loved it. And again, the chorus on the song just sounds phenomenal. The music is so well written and the vocals work so well with it. And the bridge is fantastic. The outro in the song is fantastic. This song and Hypochondria both gave me goosebumps and I had to listen to them like two or three times even after I got done reviewing them. The one song on this album that I really just didn't like or get into is probably Instability. And the music on it's great, the vocals are great, lyrics are amazing, but the only thing is, is the chorus just felt weaker than all the other choruses in the album, and it just kind of fell flat. It almost felt lazy to me in a way. But still not to say it's not a great song. I mean, the bridge in it alone is worth listening to. It's heavy as could be. And all these songs are really great. There's not really a song that I didn't enjoy while I was listening to it, which that's honestly that's what I look for in a really good album is just how much enjoyment do I get out of it I also really didn't like the song here for war which I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for just because it's one of their singles and it's one of the songs that really got everybody excited about this album but the only reason why I didn't like that one is because it just had a little bit too much radio play for it like it just I just wanted 
a little bit more meat, where on all these other songs, the choruses seem a little bit smaller or they just have a really good hook to them. And this song, it was mostly just all chorus based. There's a verse and then it's chorus and bridge and chorus and chorus. They just do the chorus just a little bit too many times. But again, the chorus in this song is huge. It's freaking, it's longer than the verse. So I mean, in a way, that's not really that bad of a thing because it isn't really lacking in terms of song substance, but it just needed a little bit more meat for me in the verses. And one thing I was kind of scared this album was going to do based off the name of the album, The World Is In Your Way, is I thought it was going to be just so heavily, just narrow-mindedly theme-centered. Like for the Cattle Decapitation album, Death Atlas, it was just so narrow-mindedly focused on a political thing and it was so narrow-mindedly focused on climate change to where it just became tiring it became old it was just it just couldn't get into it after you get after you listen to the first song you don't need to listen to any other songs because they're all the same they're, they're all about the same thing you don't there's no more substance that you need to take in they don't make you feel anything else other than the way you felt in the first song but this album like every single song has a different kind of theme to it but it all centers around the world is in your way and it kind of it's very good narrative over it all it's just the way how the songs are written and they're placed in the album is absolutely perfect like the second half of the album gets a little bit slower and i mean just a little bit but it still holds your attention it still has got the same feel and it's easy to make it all the way through it's not a struggle at all like some of the albums unfortunately have been on this channel uh, sometimes they're a little bit of a struggle for me to make through or even start to be honest so with all that said i have to give this album a 10 and just hear me out i know this is the first 10 i've ever given in any of my reviews and i know that my last video i did as i lay dying shaped by fire i gave it like a 6.8 and i gave other albums that were more acclaimed to lower ratings than what they deserved and the reason for that is because to me the whole point in making music is to have an emotion and then want to express that emotion to another individual through the art of music, through guitar and drums and vocals, and to be able to make it entertaining and to be able to tell a story and hold somebody's attention and just make the listener feel something. If you can make the listener feel something, then you, you did your job. I mean, it's perfect. Then Yes, that is good music. And for this album, for what it is and what it sets out to do and its purpose does it flawlessly. They couldn't have done it any better. Now, if you pick up this album and you're expecting to hear face melting guitar solos or over the top drum work, then you're going to be a little bit disappointed. But if you go into it looking for a heavy metal album with some hardcore elements to it, with some fantastic vocals, great lyrics, super catchy choruses, big sounds, even like the low parts still have tons of energy. That's another thing I like about this album. It has so much energy. It's insane. I would love to see these guys live just specifically for the energy. I feel like that would be a great show. And I suggest that if you do get a chance to go see these guys, go and check them out. They're probably going to be at a small venue. It's probably going to be like 20 bucks. The energy is going to be fantastic. It's going to be well worth it. If I have a chance, I'm going to go see him. Heck, I saw him when they were rest or pose. I've talked to Tony a couple times when he was there. Heck, I even bought Tony's guitar off of him. He was selling one of his Ibanezes on Instagram. Super honest, super cool guy. When I met him at the rest or pose show, he sat there and talked to me for like five minutes after the show and then ran off to talk to some other people. They're very cool, very real guys. And that's another thing I like too is when you support a small band full of cool dudes, I mean, nobody else deserves it more than that. Most of you guys probably haven't even heard of this band, unless if you know who Rest or Pose is, or, I mean, they've been kind of blowing up on Instagram lately, unless if you've heard about them on Instagram, you probably haven't even heard of them, so I suggest you go check it out. They're not as heavy as some of the other albums I've reviewed on here, like I said, As I Lay Dying and Cattle Decapitation, they're nothing like that, so they're really easy to digest and get into they're not way over the top so i mean even if you just like soft rock you could probably get into these guys maybe not soft rock but i still suggest you check this album out they have great energy it's great music 
And after you listen to it, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of it. If you think I'm crazy for rating this as a 10, maybe you agree with me. Again, just leave a comment below letting me know what it is. And if you have any other albums you want to review, also leave a comment below letting me know what they are and I'll make it happen for you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I do upload videos. Doing any of those things helps me out tremendously and I appreciate it more than you know. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. I was